UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research, unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody and welcome to Westwood for UCLA Bruin Talk. Allison Taylor and I are happy to have you join us. Today's going to be a great show as we're going to talk to some elite athletes, some of the best on the Westwood campus. Before we meet our first guests, let's take a look at the upcoming events. Women's golf has always been a strong sport at UCLA, and this year they have the advantage of having the Pac-12 championships just up the road in Valencia. We're looking forward to that, and we're looking forward to chatting with a couple members of the UCLA women's golf team, senior Tiffany Lua and last year's Pac-12 Freshman of the Year, Aaron Lee. Welcome to Bruin Talk. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having, having us. us. We talked about the championships being just up the road. How important is that, Aaron, to have the championships here in basically in your hometown um, it's definitely a hometown you know advantage so we've been going out a couple times throughout the past year you know just to get the feel of the course and you know just to know where the pins are on the greens just as an advantage so it's really nice and it's convenient just close to home Tiffany we've seen you not only playing at UCLA but international competition in the Curtis Cup in a lot of USGA amateur events but tell us about playing college golf tell us about the excitement you feel at this level um, Playing college golf has definitely been such an eye-opening experience. I've loved it. Golf has been an individual sport for most of my life. And just having teammates who all have really high goals and who are just as motivated as you are, um, I've been really lucky to be around uh, some great people and great coaches that push me and want me to get better. Tiffany, you were injured for the fall season, and you're getting back to full strength now. How excited are you to be back out on the course being able to do what you love? I am so excited. Fall was definitely um, a rough patch for myself. It was a growing time. I've always, you know, fought wrist injuries, but it's never really kept me from playing. So it kept me out for a good five months. Um, I came out of it stronger. I worked hard, and um, I'm just happy to be out playing again. Let's talk about the mental aspect of being out. That's got to be probably tougher than the physical aspect. You're, you're probably not away from the range or not hitting balls. You've never been off that long since you were learning to play the game. I'm definitely stubborn when people tell me, you know, to put the clubs away. I, it's really an effort for me to listen to them, um, but I had to do it if I still wanted to play. And it gave me a chance to enjoy some of the hobbies that I never really had time to, like I enjoy eating. So I explored a couple of nice restaurants around LA and just a couple of the touristy spots I never really had a chance to. And it was just um, a great downtime for me. Erin, Tiffany talked about golf being a team sport at the college level, but an individual sport elsewhere in your career. Tell us about the team aspect of it. How fun is that? Um, it's definitely been a great joy the past two years for me, especially. Um, really, I didn't have a lot of expectations coming in. 
But I mean, ever since being at UCLA, especially on the team, it's been amazing, you know. Um, being part of the team, we get to, you know, travel a lot, go out and see places, and then definitely eating is <laughs> definitely a hobby of mine <laughs> and for a lot of us on the team. So it's been, it's been awesome. And also, you know, just um, being out in the environment as a team, it's different than being in an individual as it was for me in my junior career. Um, you know, playing as an individual, you only had to look at from your perspective, but then being on the team, you have to think about your other teammates, you have to lean, in, lean on them and also like um, respect them. And you know, it's awesome because they're like a second family to me, so it's really nice. Tiffany, I want to talk to you a little bit about the training that happens off the course. Not a lot of people think about a golfer needing to lift weights or do conditioning or any of that kind of stuff to stay strong and healthy. But tell us a little bit about what you guys do off the course to make sure that you're your best on the course. Um, that's definitely a common uh, misperception about golfers. But I always tell people, you know, we're on our feet for a good uh, six to eight hours, depending on the day, because we have to warm up, we have to play the round, and usually we practice after. And so a lot of us do cardio on our own and we incorporate cardio in our workouts. And we focus a lot on just core stability and just we do a lot of abs and we enjoy doing them. <laughs> and we have a lot of fun when we work out and it's just a really good way to make sure that we have stamina for a good solid eight hours. And you've been working with strength and conditioning coach David Wood, who mm -hmm. is helping the women's golf team as well as the women's basketball team. Obviously different training methods for the two teams, but yeah. he's an avid golfer. It's gotta be fun talking to him. No, he's been great. He just started with us this year and he works really hard and he definitely pushes us to go up in weights, which is always really nice to have. Aaron, uh, when you grew up, you obviously had a talent for the game. When did you know that you were going to be somebody who could really compete at the highest level? Um, honestly, I didn't know I had a talent. It's always <laughs> been like something I had to practice on. Um, it was my dad who got me into the game when I was about nine, ten. Um, back then, it was just for leisure, you know, just going out to hit some balls with my dad. But um, over time, we went out, and he's like, "Oh, maybe you can, you know, take up golf and play competitively." So we got into it, and but back then it was more like, "Oh, I was forced into play." So, but um, so I didn't really have a sincere joy for the game. So it was a little bit odd. But over time, when I played competitively and got better, it, it became like a passion for me. And so being at college, I've learned how to appreciate the game of golf, especially, and how lucky I am to be here. Before we went on the air, we were talking, I told you that I watch a lot of LPGA golf and a lot of the amateur events, Curtis Cup, uh, the US amateurs. I know, Tiffany, you've had an undefeated record in the Curtis Cup. But tell us what it's like to have the cameras on you. You're out there not just by yourself, not with your team, but actually having people follow your play. What's that feel like? Um, well, I've always loved playing in front of people. I think it's fun to be able to share like my passion in life with others. I know my parents try to come out and watch me any chance they get. And I always get really excited when my friends um, come out and watch me. Uh, but in general, you know, I think you just kind of get used to it. And I've always seen golf as some sort of an escape of the world. And yeah, you know, there's people, but I'm still staring at the little flag from far away. So I think I always just kind of have like this tunnel vision and I just focus on what I need to do. Erin, so. Kerry Forsyth is a very supportive coach, very hands-on coach with the UCLA golf team. What's the balance sometimes between your vision of how you want to play a shot or a hole or a match and your coach's vision? Do you have conferences about things like that? I have never really had um, a confrontation with her. Um, I've always been able to agree with her on, you know, being on the golf course. And she, she's very straightforward, direct, and she has a very thick skin, which most of us know. So <laughs> it's like, um, I just take in what she says. And it, you know, if I have a disagreement, I let her know. And she's very accepting and you know, very nice about it. So, Tiffany, Dave alluded to Carrie Forsyth, your guys' coach. And in 2011, she got inducted into the NGCA Hall of Fame, which is incredible. What is it like to be playing for such a legendary coach on a daily basis? You have to feel like you're getting a lot of information out of her. Oh, yeah. You know, and the best thing about it is, you know, I feel like she totally deserves it. Um, of my four years here, she's been nothing but supportive. And, you know, there's a couple of times where we butt heads on decisions on the golf course. But um, in the end, I know that she wants the best for me in terms of, you know, wanting me to score and, you know, as a person. And it's just you know, an extra, it's a bonus to have that, you know, for someone as a coach. Well, as Bruin golfers, you follow a great tradition, including a lot of golfers that have gone on to the big break and, of course, into the professional ranks. Have you thought about things like that, Tiffany, now that you're a senior? 
Um, I, a lot of my friends have gone on the big break. I don't know if I'll necessarily be a part of that yet, um, but I'm definitely going to try to get into professional golf right after college, so I'm really excited for that. Well, we talk about the big break, and you talk about all the trick shots you have to hit in a show like that, things like the flop wall, the very popular part of the show. Do you work on things like that in your everyday workouts? I, necess I don't necessarily try to flop over a wall, just for my safety as it is. <laughs> um, but I've grown up playing golf around guys, and I've always tried to mess around with them and try to learn new shots, and I do that on my own nowadays. Because um, golf is an individual sport and you practice a lot by yourself, so it kind of gives it a fun way to practice. But um, no, I don't really make an effort to break glass or, <laughs> <laughs> or to flop over walls anytime soon. Aaron, you get into tournament situations, you never know what kind of shot you're going to have to hit. And you have to have a great understanding of the rules as well as right. the technical ability to pull off the shot. How much time do you spend studying and making sure you're current on the rules? Um, honestly, I <laughs> haven't actually opened a rules book before, so oh I should actually get to that. But, <laughs> I, I mean, I know the basic rules, like, you know, the OB line and the hazards. Just the simple ones, like, no more than 14 clubs and, you know, different balls you can't have. But um, I think that from what I've heard and um, people I've spoken to at the USJ tournaments, I mean, if you're going to play the sport you love, especially golf, you need to know the rules. I mean, there's no harm in knowing the rules. So. Well, there isn't always a rules official around to call over, so sometimes you have to make that judgment calls, and of course the game relies on great personal integrity, doesn't it? Right, it does. Yeah. As you get back onto the course this year, again, looking toward the Pac-12s, mentally, are you trying to peak at that tournament, or are you just trying to play the best round you can every time out? Um, ideally, you know, you want to peak towards postseason because that's when the tournaments count the most. But every tournament I go into, I try to prepare the best I can and just play the best I can. Um, and I believe in just going out there with your full heart and effort. So I'm going to do that every tournament. Of course, some tournaments are stroke play. Then you get into match play situations. What do you personally prefer? I mean, I love stroke play because it's very fair and it is what it is. It's just you just count up the strokes. But I personally am a huge fan of match play. I'm really competitive. All my teammates know that I am, and any chance that I can compete, you know, head to head, it's just a lot of fun to me. Erin, when you play match play, how aware are you of what your competitor is doing on the whole? How much does that alter your strategy on how you play your shots? I think um, I can definitely say it's different from stroke play. I mean, match play, you're playing against this one person, so you need to be aware of, you know, what kind of what strategy they're planning on taking, um, what how many strokes they're taking as well, you know. Um, and at times you have to be aggressive and not very defensive ex exactly on the golf course. So it's, it's a fun, fun uh, match. So I love match play compared to stroke play. Um, I know stroke play is very fair, but match play, just I've been really um, confident about it and very strong in it. So I love it a lot. I want to talk to you guys about something that both of you have mentioned that has nothing to do with golf. But you both mentioned how much the team loves to eat. Oh my gosh. And I know I've seen pictures on Twitter and Instagram of these <laughs> amazing meals. So what do you guys do? Do you just go out as a team? You go get yogurt? What do you guys do? Um, well, you know, I think probably around my sophomore year, I, we were talking to the coaches, and we all have this passion for food. And, you know, coaches and our assistant coach, Alicia, said, you know, why don't we just stop going to the typical, like, P.F. Chang, California Pizza Kitchen, because it's everywhere, and just Yelp local foods and favorites. And we've been doing that pretty much ever since. And it's been amazing, the culture that we've seen, and just been really eye-opening to try new things. In your college career, Tiffany, where are some of the most interesting places you've played outside of California? Uh, my college career? Well... A favorite place to go is always Hawaii. I've never gone to Hawaii since I came to college, and we'll be going there actually our next tournament during spring break, so that'll be my third time. And it's just definitely a treat to go every time. One of the great things about golf is that the rules are the same, but every course is totally different, a lot of them relying on natural features. I know you played up at Oregon, Abandoned Dunes, which has got to be like a different planet than playing down here in Southern <laughs> yeah. California. What's it like when you get up there and it's windy and you have to make all those calculations about how to adjust your shots? I think once you've played, you know, for a long time, I've been playing since I was eight, um, you learn to kind of just adjust your game and you just have a plan and if there's nature involved like wind and rain, you just kind of make the most of it and just try to play as smart as you can. Erin, as only a sophomore, have you started thinking about life after UCLA and how you're going to advance your golf career? 
Um, I have, but I mean, before I came to college, my parents and I, we discussed like, oh, after one or two years in college, you know, we're going we're gonna to go pro with you. So I'm like, uh, okay, you know, whatever. Because like, I know a lot of friends from junior career who have turned pro after, you know, college or stayed one year and turned pro. Pro. But I think ever since coming to UCLA during freshman year, I've loved it since. And so I've, I'm planning on staying for years, getting my degree and everything. But also, um, you know, because of the game that I love, I definitely want to go out and, you know, travel the world, play golf, something you definitely love to do. So. Well, both of you, thank you for joining us on Bruin Talk. We are looking forward to the rest of the season. Looking forward to seeing you out on the LPGA Tour. Thank, Thank you. you. And we're looking forward to seeing you after this break. We're going to pause for a brief public service announcement, and we'll be right back. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. Hi everybody and welcome back to Bruin Talk. It is now time to honor our student athlete of the week. This week we honor BB Bates of softball as our athlete of the week. BB's hitting has been instrumental to the Bruins' success thus far. She leads the team in runs batted in, slugging percentage, and home runs. So far this season, Bates has hit 12 home runs to help the Bruins attain an 18-2 record. We look forward to continued strong play and leadership from the senior. Congratulations, BB, and good luck with the rest of the season. If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at uclabruins.com. And on uclabruins.com, you can learn all about the best athletes in the world, including the world-class athletes on the women's gymnastics team. We're happy to be joined by two of them today, Vanessa Zamaripa and Maddie Larson. Welcome to Bruin Talk. Thank you. Thank you. Maddie, you just came back off a really difficult three-week road swing up at Oregon, then Oklahoma, then Alabama. Pretty nice to be back home, isn't it? Very nice. Yeah, we're all excited to finally compete back at home. Tell us about the challenges of competing on the road in front of big, not so pl always pleasant crowds. Um, it's hard sometimes. It's hard to switch from the whole crowd cheering for you to the whole crowd not cheering for you. But um, what some of our seniors have taught us this year that's really helped is that we take the crowd's energy and we just use it for ourselves no matter if we hear them cheering loud for the other team. We just use that energy and put it into our own routines. Vanessa, I'm sure they cheered up at Stanford in February when you got a perfect 10 on the vault, made headlines. That was the seventh of your career. Tell us about the feeling of seeing that score come up. <laughs> um, well, you know, it, it's hard competing away in the first place. So um, it was very exciting to, you know, get another 10. It's kind of been a while. And you know, was the fun thing about it was that before I did my vault, I pictured it in my head and made the corrections in my head before I went. And like even before I did my vault, I, I felt like I already knew it was going to happen. So it was almost like no surprise. <laughs> Maddie, I want to go back to the road swing that you guys just had for just a second. We're going to talk in a little bit about how you guys are hosting NCAA championships here on UCLA's campus in Poly Pavilion, which is I'm sure everyone is really excited about. Yeah. But how important is it that you have gone on that road swing and gained that confidence of competing on the road? It's got to give you a good feeling going into postseason where you know you're going to finish up here at, at Poly. Yeah, you know, it's, it's nice to know that we only have to be on the road for two more meets. Um, that's usually the hardest stretch of the season, being uh, on the road for weeks in a row. And last year, I don't think we were on the road for three weeks in a row. So this is my first time doing that. And I know that if we can get through that, then we can definitely get through the long week of competitions, Nationals week. Vanessa, you said something really interesting a minute ago about getting ready for that vault. And I, I want to talk about the difference between the events, because you've got the Florex, you've got a lot of different moves you've got to make, the beam, the bars, but the vault is just one time down the runway and that's it. <laughs> you're sitting there, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. Have you got a trigger? Is there something that tells you, okay, now I'm ready? Um, like before I do my vault? Yeah. Or? Like, just tell us about the <clears throat> mental preparation for actually taking off. Oh, okay. Um, well... There's usually like, you know, several people before I go. And so during that time, I kind of, you know, take like a mental break and then 
two people before me, I start going through my vault. And then um, when I salute, I, I mean, if you've seen me, you know, I stand there for like 10 seconds and I'm basically, you know, like doing some breathing techniques to help me calm down and use my nerves to my advantage. And after that, I'm all set to go, so. Maddie, Allison <laughs> is a gymnast, so she knows the ins Was. and outs of your sport. <laughs> Was. As just a non-gymnast member of the public watching gymnastics, I always wonder how you concentrate when there's other events going on around you. How do you focus in on what you have to accomplish? It's funny because you learn at such a young age, and um, it's kind of just competing over and over again. It's something you really learn. I don't even notice what music is playing while I'm competing or what people are doing on the other events. Um, and especially even when my teammates are competing, we're so focused on each other that you really don't even know what's going on. Vanessa, you've already won four Pac-12 Gymnast of the Week titles this year alone, and that has tied a conference record, and you've still got several weeks of regular season left. You are a senior. This is your last season on campus. Do you have any other personal goals? It seems like you've already attained <laughs> everything individually that you would want to attain. There's quite a few, you know, obviously helping my team win the national championship and just being like a better leader. I think, you know, it's really hard to speak out, you know, and to other girls and, you know, taking that risk of, you know, helping them. It may or may not, but, you know, just putting yourself out there and um, I guess a more concrete goal would be, um, you know, hopefully winning individual titles at nationals. Um, I've only won vault and I feel like I'm capable of winning more than that. Let, let's talk about the <laughs> national championships because as Allison mentioned, they are going to be at Pauley Pavilion. That's mm -hmm. a great opportunity. <clears throat> Tell us how exciting it is to be actually having the meet at home. Well, it's really exciting because, you know, obviously I'm a senior, so that would be my final competition, you know, as NCAA championships at home. So I can't think of a better way to end my collegiate career than at home in Pauley. So. Maddie, the Bruin crowds have been very supportive of UCLA. The, the gymnastics meets always draw really well, but that's going to be packed. Yeah. That's going to be a great atmosphere. It sounds like fun, doesn't it? Yeah, it was even fun uh, last year in Georgia because every team kind of has their own cheering section. So um, you know that you can like look up in the crowd and see your Bruins there, and here there'll be even more, so that'll be great. You have both obviously been at a high level in this sport for a long time. Gymnasts start very early. But you come to UCLA and you're coached by Valerie Condos Field, a former dancer. What kind of flair has she brought to your gymnastics by, by being coached by her? Um, well, besides being really involved on the artistic part of gymnastics and focusing on our dance on form beam, she's really brought like mental game out of me, which is something I never concentrated on before coming to UCLA. So uh, that's really helped my uh, my competitions, and it's just helped me be uh, much more stress-free. Vanessa, five of the Pac-12 teams are currently ranked in the top 25, which means any conference meet you go to basically is going to be an intense competition. But how does it feel to compete in such a competitive conference? You've got to feel good that you're among the best of the best. Well, I think it helps us prepare for nationals. You know, if we can do well in this conference and uh, that it's like one of the best in the nation, I think that should help us mentally going into championships. And, you know, I mean, I've told my teammates before that, you know, the only team we're up against is ourselves. So as long as we just focus on what we can do and prepare to the best of our ability, then that's really all we should focus on is just ourselves and not other teams. You have both competed at high levels, both internationally and here in college. Maddie, tell us about the difference between competing on the college level and competing on the international level. Um, something that's really different is when you're competing internationally, even though you're part of a team and you're traveling as a team, it's really all individual. Um, a lot of the gymnasts are focused more on their individual title, and then here in college it's all team, like team comes first. Um, it's great to know that if you're having an off day, you can trust your teammate to come in and compete for you, and you don't really have that in, in um, international competition. Vanessa, four years at UCLA, um, it's got to be rewarding to know your teammates always have your back. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, if for any reason, like, I can't compete floor, I know someone can come in for me. And I think, you know, with the people not competing so much, training so hard, that inspires me to 
work even harder because they once they raise the bar, then I feel like I have to step up too. Maddie, you alluded to the fact that college gymnastics is really focused all on the team, which differs greatly from international competition. But how important is that team chemistry to team success here at college? Uh, it's obviously really important. Um, trust is so important. You don't want to ever go out on the floor and don't think that the people that are cheering for you like don't have your backs. And um, I mean, it's complete opposite here. Like, you know that everyone that's in that little corral that's cheering you on while you're competing, like they all just want so much for you and they want so much for the team and it really helps me do better. When you're outside of the gym, you're walking down to class, you're going up Bruin Walk, you're going to, are you still thinking about routines? You're thinking about <laughs> nailing it? You're thinking about honing in all the skills? Um, well, for me, like if I'm not in the gym, then I would rather not think about it and just you know focus on school because right after practice we immediately have class so all my focus should be on school at that point and if for any other reason like if I need a stretch later on in the day then you know that may cross my mind but otherwise I just focus on what I need to do next. Maddie how has the discipline of your sport helped you with the discipline of your studies? Uh, it's definitely it goes hand in hand um, when you're well prepared in sports, then you know you're going to compete well. So when you're well prepared in a class, you know you're going to do well on the test. So, um, I mean, it's kind of just helped me not procrastinate, which is something I have trouble with sometimes. But I know that I need to get all my studying done before the test. Vanessa, NCAA championships in Poly Pavilion, an exciting way to end the season. What can fans expect from the Bruins? <laughs> We're going to put on a good show. I have a feeling, you know, we haven't peaked yet and you know the best is yet to come from us and I'm really excited about it. Good luck in the national championships. Vanessa, Maddie, thanks for coming in and joining us. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for joining us. Allison and I will be back next week with another great show. Until then, so long from Westwood.